Abbots Creek students. I'm Anna Padres. And I'm Keith Norval. And we are artists, painting, painters here in Raleigh. And welcome to our studio. This is where we create all of our paintings. So I like to paint animals in nature a lot of the time. So here's a painting that I did. It's a llama and there's a lot of birds flying in the air. And I like to paint clouds and trees and plants and stuff too. And I like to use a lot of different colors. So this is one of my paintings. So this is an owl family. Um, so my work, I like to do sort of cartoony, stylized stuff. Um, so, you know, this is not quite a super accurate owl, but it's my version of it. So this is an owl family. And I decided I wanted to make them purple. All right, so we are here today to talk to you guys about the mural that we're going to be working with you guys on. So let's go ahead and get started. Yeah. So this is a sketch that I did of um, our idea for the mural. Like I talked about in the live meet with you guys. Um, you can see it a little closer here. So it shows the three palettes, the blue palette, the green palette, and the earth tone palette. Um, this is just a rough sketch. When you guys do your animal paintings, it's gonna look a lot different. From far away, it'll look like a landscape, and from close up, you will be able to see a lot of different creatures. Okay, so we are going to show you guys some examples of some different North Carolina creatures and plants that you're likely to see in the woods. Um, feel free to use any of the examples we give you or if you can come up with some new and different ones on your own. There's literally like hundreds of things you can pick from. Just make sure it's something that you would see in North Carolina. Here we have a beautiful gray wolf. We have wolves and coyotes here in North Carolina. Here is a cougar or a mountain lion. Here we have some wild turkeys. Here's a raccoon. A white-tailed deer. A groundhog. An opossum. Common gray squirrel. A skunk. A flying squirrel. A chipmunk. A bunny rabbit. A box turtle. A blue-tailed skink. A black snake.
a copper head. A swallowtail butterfly. A moth. A black widow spider. A garden spider. A cicada. A titmouse. Chickadee. A nut hatch. A black and white warbler. A brown thrasher. A hermit thrush. A native thistle. Ferns. in mushrooms. Hi Abbots Creek students. Um, I am making this video for those of you who have the green palette. So in your bag you are going to have your piece of tie bag. This is your painting canvas that you're going to be painting on. Um, I have mine here. Um, for setup you're going to want a jar of water, paint brushes, I'm using this palette to mix my colors. If you don't have a palette like this, you can use a piece of tin foil or wax paper or even a paper plate, um, anything like that. A lid of a can can work. Um, in here, you're going to have your colors. So we have cerulean blue, Hansa yellow, black, and green. And so I'm going to put a little bit of each color onto my palette so I'll be able to work with it. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is try to, you guys see when I put my color out, I clean my palette knife off before I get the next color so that I don't mix the colors in the jars. Um, If you don't have a palette knife to get your colors out with, you could use a plastic knife or you could even use your paintbrush. That will work. You just want to clean your paintbrush out really good before going to the next color. Because yellow, you may have noticed, um, is hard to keep it clean. Other colors mix into it really easily. I'm just going to leave the lids off because I may need more like in a minute. Okay. Okay. So, um, we picked these colors because you can really make a variety of different greens with these. And you are going to want um, lots of different shades to create your picture. So, first off, we have green. So, you have regular green you can take a little bit of green over here and then um, 
mix some yellow into the green and you're gonna get a lighter green, like a lemony green. A brighter green. And then you could take your green to a different area. Probably could use a little more of that actually. And then you can mix a little bit of blue and you're gonna get a blue green. Kind of a turquoise. Um, I'm gonna, that turned out more blue. I like the color, but I wanted one that was a little more green. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that color to the side and I'm gonna get some more green and mix that. So you can see now I'm just getting kind of a darker green color. And then you can also take your green and let's see something in there. You can mix a little bit of black into it. Actually, oops. <laughs> okay. Let me separate that out. I put too much black. I just want a little bit of black. You mix your black into your green, you can get a different type of dark green. Let me put a little more in there. It's a nice um, dark color. And then also another cool thing, if you want an olive green, you could take your yellow and mix a little black in there. And believe it or not, that's gonna give you a green, like an olivey green. Kind of a brownish green. You can also mix a tiny bit of green in there just to make it a little more green. Okay, you can also mix your yellow and blue together to get a different shade of green than what you already have. And so any of these greens, if you wanna lighten them up, you're gonna add yellow. So if I wanna lighten this, I add a little yellow. And if I wanna darken it, I can either add blue or black to darken it. So I have kind of a good variety to get started with. I may mix some more as I go. Now for inspiration, so with the green palette, um, in the mural, these are gonna be the tops of the trees, the foliage on the bushes, everything in our landscape that is green, we're gonna represent with this palette. And so like we talked about before, um, when you stand far away from this mural, you're going to see kind of a green tree line. But when you look closely, there's going to be animals and other nature stuff in that green. So, so each one of you is going to be painting your own um, nature inspiration, animal or plant or both. Um, so I have some inspiration sitting out on my table. Um, these nature guides are great. Um, so you can also, if you don't have nature guides at your house, uh, you can go Google a certain animal that you want to look up and get a good image to work from. It's always really good to have an image to work from for these. So I am going to choose to do a screech owl for my animal inspiration. Um, these are really cool birds. They're big birds. so. Okay, so the first thing I want to do before I get started with my Screech Owl is kind of just get a background color. I don't want any white showing through in this because um, I want it to look more like a forest. So I'm, I'm adding a little bit of water to this kind of um, olive green that I made and just spreading it all over so I can get a nice background. I may have run out. That's okay. It doesn't take a lot. If you add a little water, it thins the paint out. I'm going to try to go all the way to the edge. I have a tablecloth on this table, so it doesn't matter if I paint on it. You guys may want to put a piece of newspaper down on your table if you're painting at home just to protect it. Okay. Okay, so there's my nice background. So now I want to pick kind of a darker color to outline my owl. 
Um, you know, and I'm gonna paint him green even though he's not actually green. Let's see. Um, okay. Okay. So, first I'm gonna draw his, like, body shape. I'm just sketching out the whole body first. The good thing about acrylic is like, while it's wet, you can actually kind of wipe it up if you mess up. You can also paint right over it so you don't need to worry. Really, you don't need to worry about messing up with this stuff. So he's got like a really cool pattern on his face that I want to capture. And I'm just going to capture him all with this green right now. And then I'm going to fill in some different shades of green in a minute to make it more interesting. So here's his big wing. And then he also has another little wing. And then his tail. And his claw. And then I think I'm also going to add I'm making a dark kind of brownish green with this black and yellow I'm gonna add I really like this pine tree to the side so I'm gonna kind of add that in it's not the main part of my picture but it's a detail I just want to kind of include so Okay, so now I can also go ahead and add in this branch that he's sitting on. Kind of goes down. I'm leaving this owl out because I just wanted all the space for this. I want to be able to make it bigger, so I just included this owl. And so he's sitting on this branch that kind of goes up and then it goes behind him. And then there. So his talon is holding on there. Okay, so now the fun part. I'm gonna start, actually, I'm gonna start with the lighter colors and then I'm gonna add the darker colors. So I'm gonna even take a little more yellow and make a light green here. And I'm gonna add that wherever I see light areas on this painting. feathers on the front um, there's these nice parts of his wing here some highlights there okay and now I'm gonna take one of my nice blue greens and add in some of the darker details that I see even though this bird is brown um, in real life, you know, for the mural, I'm making him green because that's my palette and that way he'll blend into the trees. So I'm going to just try to interpret those lights and darks with my green palette, if that makes sense. Let's see. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and get really dark with my black. Actually, first I'm going to do his eyes yellow. And then I'm going to get really dark with my black here. And he has some parts of his body that are very dark, like his pupils. Okay. And then his beak. I might add some of his, um, he has like kind of a dark line around his head here when I look. And then on his wings a little bit. Let's see. His talons are actually lighter though, so I grabbed some yellow for that part. Let's 
Okay, so now I'm gonna take advantage of this um, pine tree shape I have. Actually, I think I'm gonna use my smaller brush for this. And I'm gonna add some pine needles in the background. Just different shades of green. So if you wanna make a skinny line when you're painting, use a small brush, um, wipe some of the extra paint off of it, and then just hold your brush more or less straight up and down. And if that's not working, get a little water, mix it into your color. Um, let's see, you don't want it too watery. Water your color down a little bit, wipe the extra off, and then that helps you make your line a little bit skinnier sometimes. So I want to continue these lines all the way to the edge. So I'm just trying to make like a, you know, kind of a pattern in my background here to show that it's a pine tree he's in. I may even go and make some bark texture with some of my dark green here. I may actually extend this pine tree all the way out to the edge of the page. And then I'm going to add a little shadow on the bottom edge of the branch. That's also going to help his toes stand out a little bit more. It'll look a little bit more realistic. Okay, and then maybe some more pine needles kind of go in behind the owl like this toward the top and this way just anywhere you have a space that's kind of open and you want to add a pattern and it doesn't have to be a pine tree it could be an oak tree it could be any type of tree that you can find a good reference for that we see around Raleigh. Um, let's see. Okay, so one last final touch I want to do. I'm looking at his ears and I'm noticing there's some dark spots here that I want to add. His ears are actually kind of fluffy. And then I want to add some light highlights the top of his ears that's um and then I might um and it's okay like your acrylic paint will stay wet for a little while and it's totally fine to kind of blend your colors together while it's still wet and that can be a really nice effect actually I'm going to go into this wing and do that too a little more so I really like the way that looks Okay, so I can go on and add some more in the background if I wanted to, like with pine needles and stuff, or I could just leave it like this. Okay, so I'm using the same green palette, and for my inspiration, I have a picture of a box turtle. So with um, Anna's, she just started painting. I'm going to sketch mine out a little bit. So you guys can do this either way. Um, so you can draw, if you want to draw lightly, don't draw too hard on here, but um, kind of lightly sketch out my turtle so I know where it's gonna go. Yeah, this um, kind of hard for you guys to see, but um, I'm just getting the main the main elements, like its feet and where its shell goes. Okay, so um, Anne already mixed up some of these paints, so I'm just gonna use these. So the first thing I'll do is kind of get my outline. So when you're doing this, try not to use a ton of black because this will be, you know, the green's going to be for, like, the, um, the trees and the grass and everything like that.
Okay, so then when I look at the shell, it's got a lot of these little um, just different plates in it. So I'm going to sketch those in. And for my background, I think I'll do like kind of a lighter color. So I'll get some of this yellow and some green. some more, more yellow. So I'm going to get a little bit of black and mix it with this darker like, turquoisey blue. Kind of go over it so the turtle stands out a little bit more. Smiling. So then for the body, I think to make it stand out, I'll use the lighter green and go back in. So feel free to kind of, you can build up the paint a little thicker if you want in certain areas. Leave some brush strokes if you want. yellow so the challenge with this is trying to interpret your picture using this other palette but don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like your picture we're just using this for inspiration so you know the turtle shell I'm looking at it and I'm kind of doing this background then I'll go back and add some more patterns to it. So I think I like this darker blue. So, and you guys, um, you know, we're just kind of doing this all at once, but if you're working on it and you're like, oh, I need to let this dry, you can wait, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, let the paint dry and then come back to it. Um, like if it's blending somewhere where you you don't want it to blend. So then what I'll do is I'm kind of filling in the rest of it with like greens and some yellows, yellow greens. 
just so that way there won't be a bunch of white around the edges. And if you want to do like some abstract shapes, you can do that. Maybe I'll do sort of kind of leafy shapes in the background. out a little bit I'll come back with a lighter color like a light lighter green so just have fun kind of play around with different brush strokes build up some texture you guys should have enough paint to really kind of add some more you know if I want to do some Van Gogh style brush strokes, I can do that. Just try to make sure you're not making it too dark. Like don't go overboard with your black. Just some final touches here. Okay, all right, I think it's done.